Hi my dear student friends how are you I am Dr Honegoda CS head department of English JSS College of Arts and Commerce Gundalpet Dear student friends now I am going to draw your attention to know about the character of Julius Caesar The character of Caesar as depicted by Shakespeare is different from that of the Caesar of history William Shakespeare wants the sympathy of the audience for Brutus he wants to represent Brutus as a sacrifice not as a butcher so he does scanty justice to the Caesar he presents Caesar as old decaying failing both in mind and body a great critic says that shakespeare's presentation of caesar is one sided or inadequate than untrue however caesar is proud and boastful he proclaims himself more dangerous than danger itself he boasts that he alone is the one constant unchanging man in all the world he speaks to himself as if he were a deity he proudly declares caesar doth not wrong he refers to the senate as his senate he wants that the meeting of the senate should be adjourned for his pleasure but he does not send them a courteous message he removes the tribunes from their public office because of a personal insult to him he rejects the petition of metellus cimber with insulting scorn julius caesar is inconsistent he first rejects Calpurnia's advice not to go out then yields to her request to stay at home he finally accepts Decius's advice and goes to the senate he justifies Decius's account of him when i tell him he hates flatterers he says he does being then most flattered his attitude to the senate also reveals his inconsistency he contemptuously refers to the senate as gray birds but he is afraid of the ridicule of the senate also he is superstitious and he is a slave of superstitious beliefs and fears but he pretends to be free from them all he tells that the bad omens apply to the world as much they as apply to him but he asks his priests to do sacrifice and give their opinion besides the above defects julius caesar has physical defects also he is deaf in the left ear he has the falling sickness he is easily defeated by cassius in a swimming contest he has lost much of his bodily vigor as he is in the evening of his life despite all the defect defects are described above caesar is a great hero with innumerable achievements to his credit he has saved the roman world from chaos and civil war he represents the glory of rome he has known no defeat at all so he may be rightly proud of himself at the outset of the play he is represented to be at the height of the glory he returns to rome in a triumphant procession 
after defeating the sons of pompey he is worshiped as a great hero by the roman mob which celebrates his victory even cassius says that he bestrides the narrow world like a colossus antony says that caesar's will is law but brutus also admits that he is a good administrator in the quarrel scene he refers to him as the foremost man of the world indeed caesar is a good judge of character he rightly tells antony on cassius as a lean and hungry look he thinks too much such men are dangerous he receives the conspirators with a great dignity and courtesy he greets everyone with a kind word or generous inquiry he completely trusts them since they drink at his house like good friends on his way to the senate he refuses to read the petition of atrimidorus saying what touches us ourselves shall be last served this statement shows his indifference to personal considerations his behavior in the senate shows his courage and firmness mark antony gives an eloquent account of caesar's greatness in his famous speech to the roman mob he described caesar's lovable personality and his greatness as a victor and a national hero when he is left alone with the dead body of caesar he refers to him as the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times even brutus and cassius realize and acknowledge the greatness of caesar just before they die thus caesar of the drama is great though not as great as the caesar of history thank you very much